Wow. <laughs> I primit, I, I, I received a message that um, that uh, this is recorded. Okay. So Mar Marcel Yanko, so Marcel Yanko, uh, his his name at birth was Marcel Yanko, but uh, he is well well known as Marcel Yanko. Uh, both in France and Germany and other countries. He was a cosmopolitan uh, uh, or so cosmo or a cosmopolitan spirit, uh, very fluently uh, connecting various cultures. So, but I don't know here I had a picture which I, sh I see now is not showing. Sorry. So Marcel Yanko, common rendition of the Romanian name Marcel Herman Yanku, um, as you see, he was born on the 24th of May, 1895, was a Romanian and Israeli visual artist, architect, and art theorist. He was the co-inventor of Dadaism and the leading exponent of constructivism in Eastern Europe. In the 1910s, he co-edited with Ion Vinia and Tristan Tsara the Romanian art magazine Symbolul. Yanku was a practitioner of Art Nouveau, Futurism, and Expressionism before contributing his painting and stage design to Tsara's literary Dadaism. He parted with Dada in 1919 when he and painter Hans Arp founded a constructive circle, Das Neue Leben. Uh, reunited with Vinia, he founded Contemporanul, the influential tribune of the Romanian avant-garde advocating a mix of constructivism, futurism, and cubism. At Contemporanul, Yanku expounded a revolutionary vision of urban planning. He designed some of the most innovative landmarks of downtown Bucharest. He worked in many art forms, including illustration, sculpture, and oil painting. Yanku was one of the leading Romanian Jewish intellectuals of his generation targeted by anti-Semitic persecution before and during World War II, he emigrated to the British Mandate for Palestine in 1941. He won the Dizengoff Prize and Israel Prize and was a founder of Ein, Ein Hod, a utopian art colony. Marcel Yank was the brother of Georges and Jules Yank, who, who were his artistic partners during and after the Dada episode. His brother-in-law and fellow constructivist promoter was the writer Jacques Costin, known as a survivor of 1940s antisemitism. In 1980, Yanku revisited his childhood years writing. Born I was, I was, as I was in beautiful Romania, into a family of well-to-do people, I had the fortune of being educated in a climate of freedom and spiritual enlightenment. My mother possessing a genuine musical talent and my father, a stern man and industrious merchant had created the conditions favorable for developing all, my, all of my aptitudes. I was a, of a sensitive and emotional nature, a withdrawn child who was predisposed to dreaming and meditating. I grew up dominated by a strong sense of humanity and social justice. The existence of disadvantaged, weak people, of impoverished workers, of beggars, hurt me. And when compared to our family's decent condition, awoke, uh, awoke in me a feeling of guilt. Um, I almost feel tempting by like reading, like reading it again, and I will, because I am patriotic and I am I am emotional because you do have a beautiful country. The country, Romania is a beautiful country. So, you know, maybe it takes uh, Marcel Yanku to tell us about the riches that we have. So I'll read again. Sorry, born as I was in beautiful Romania into a family of well-to-do people, I had the, the fortune of being educated in a climate of freedom and spiritual enlightenment. And this is what we should strive towards as well, freedom and spiritual enlightenment. My mother possessing a genuine musical talent and my father, stern man and industrious merchant 
had created the conditions favorable for developing all of my aptitudes. I was of a sensitive and emotional nature, a withdrawn child who was predisposed to dreaming and meditating. And here I have to add, we should dream and we should meditate because that's where our, where our true nature is. I grew up dominated by a strong sense of humanity and social justice. And we should also be dominated by a strong sense of humanity and social justice. The existence of disadvantaged, weak people, of impoverished workers, of beggars hurt me. And when compared to our family's decent condition, awoke in me a feeling of guilt. Now it's true, his family's condition was more than decent. They were upper middle class and uh, you know, very well connected uh, with a certain community. And he built actually most of his buildings for, uh, in part for his family and, uh, and then for their connections. Anyway, but it, it moves me what he wrote because I do think that he, he, he told the truth. And this was in 19, 1980. He was already 85 years old. And he reflected on his childhood and uh, you know young years in Romania. And I think he told us um, uh, a sensitive uh, truth. He, he was the man, but this is the, a picture taken uh, in, uh, in Israel. I had another picture at the beginning. I don't know why it is not displayed. I will begin with some paintings and I will also end with paintings, but in between will be the bulk of the presentation about his architecture. He, he actually, it might, it might be that his heart was somehow more in, into painting than, than architecture, although he built a lot, uh, about 40 buildings, I understood, 20 buildings or so are still standing, barely. Euphoria Dada, this is a painting from 1917, so he was 22 years old. Um, what can be said about the Dada movement? Four of the founders of the Dada movement were Romanian. Tristan Tsara, the poet, and his name derived from Trist and Tsara. That's, it was a, a, a you know, artificially created name. Uh, it was not his so-called real name, Tristan Tsara, Trist and Tsara, and then uh, Marcel, Marcel Iancu the two of them. And it's very interesting that an architect who built, who had a sense of, you know, uh, of course, uh, his involvement with the Dada was prior to him building. But still, he became an architect. He was trained in Zurich at the Polytechnic in Zurich. And uh, the fact that he, he was one of the founders of, um, uh, of, uh, of the Dada movement at Cabaret Voltaire in Zurich says a lot about him. He was a revolutionary born to, to change the world. And this is what the Dada movement uh, meant, uh, maybe problematically, because uh, um, it, it had touches of what, what might be called nihilism. And apparently Tristan Sara was uh, uh, you know, controversial in this respect. And, and, and at one point, they even broke, broke apart and never, never came back together. Uh, and this might explain why Tristan Sara didn't commission his older friend uh, um, Tris, uh, Marcel Iancu to build his house in, in Paris, but instead commissioned Adolf Loos. Uh, so, but the Dada movement is worthy of, of, of being uh, known. And uh, it's important, I think, to reflect on the, on the uh, on, on the unconventional poet and the unconventional artist and the unconventional architect uh, who advocated uh, uh, paradoxically uh, turning one's back on, 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 on art in order to give birth to a truer art uh, and uh, in essence giving birth to life. So the, the Dada, although it appears to be uh, uh, anti-art and even anti-life, is actually the last word of the manifesto published by uh, uh, Tristan Tsara is actually life. So um, it is a paradoxical, uh, in fact, the very name Dada. Well, there are various interpretations, uh, what, what it meant. 
but apparently Marcellianco testified that uh, it came from uh, Tristan Tsara. So, uh, and, and the da means, of course, yes. So the movement that appears to be negative, it was actually positive. And I believe this is the, true, uh, the truth, although maybe there were excesses, especially in later years, and Tristan Tsara uh, was, uh, was accused of actually pushing sometimes too far. And that's why, that's why they had fights. But all in all, I, I personally have uh, um, uh, affection for the Dada movement. And I even launched a competition some years ago for an architectural competition, the House of Dada. Uh, another painting by, uh, by Marcel Iancu. Uh, his paintings are good, but you can, you can see certain influences. I think he was sensitive to artistic influences. And this man, he actually collaborated with, with some of the greatest uh, spirits in, in, in art uh, at that time, you know, like Giacometti or uh, Hans Arp. Or the, he, this is not a little thing. It shows the caliber of his uh, intellect. Untitled, Mask, a portrait of uh, Tristan Zara. Now, if, if Marcel Iancu doesn't show us that there is a relationship between architecture and art, I don't know who can, because in modern times, he represents a, a, a parad parad paradigm that was, uh, uh, you know, uh, sublimely illustrated uh, in, in, other, uh, in, in, in other centuries. You know, it's enough to mention the Renaissance. It would have been unimaginable during the Renaissance to have an architect who was a bureaucrat and a homo economicus. Instead, they were all artists, all of them. You know, Pietro da Cortona, Bernini, Boromini, Bramante, Michelangelo, Raphael, they were all artists. And we should never forget this. And Marcel Iancu didn't forget this. There is a relationship between art and architecture. And when that relationship is severed, the results cannot be good. Uh, Marina, another, uh, he, he, uh, he didn't quite find his language, so to speak. He was sometimes figurative, sometimes abstract. He tried to negotiate between them. And even in his architecture, there is a dialogue and sometimes a, a tension dialogue between tradition, what we call tradition, and what we call innovation. But he was quite capable of a radical thinking. That's why he was one of the founders of the Dada movement, perhaps the most radical art movement in the 20th century, Port. But when we look at these paintings, we wonder, you know, what does this have to do with the Dada movement? Well, not much. In fact, nothing, as far as I can tell. Uh, so, um, unless here is a fallen uh, ship or something, you know, uh, in the foreground here. Also, what is kind of interesting, although at, at a certain time he turned his back on the Dada, he called his museum in Israel the, the Yanku Dada Museum. Why did he put the word Dada there? Obviously, maybe an important part of his heart was uh, uh, connected with uh, with the Dada. Arab Cafe, he was uh, very uh, interested in the Arab world and he moved to Palestine and uh, uh, he even moved to a, a deserted Arab uh, village and that's where he lived and there where he create, that's where he created a, a colony, a, a colony for artists. Uh, but the fascination with the Arab world belonged to other, other people, uh, you know, like Paul Klee, the great painter, a Swiss painter who also taught at the Bauhaus, you know, when he went to uh, Tunisia, to Nice uh, also, and Delacroix as well, that the attraction of, of the northern part of Africa existed for other artists as well. Another work connected with the Arab world, the uh, Arab Café, Miramalach, uh, so uh, correlated with what he said, his statement that although he was born in a well-to-do family, he had uh, a lot of uh, feeling for uh, those uh, less privileged. Here also we see an attraction towards the opposites. If we are to think that you know the Arabs are the opposite of uh, 
of, uh, of the Jews, but the truth of the matter is, that I think they are very similar in a way, you know, and, uh, you know, it's just a slight difference somewhere, you know, but, but uh, you know, essentially, um, is that a difficult uh, relationship between uh, and uh, yeah in a way relationship between love and hate it's a thin thin very thin frontier four figures about to be executed he was also a very compassionate man and and he 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 was probably uh, uh, devastated by the by the by the injustices of the world here we see four figures about to be executed you know could we imagine what that means, you know, to face the rifles or to face the guillotine or to face uh, who knows what? You know, there are incredible uh, tragedies in the world and they, they never end. It's very sad. You know, the constructivist element in his architecture, in my opinion, is a little bit less evident at least in in the in the in the in the graphic works than expressionism he had a very strong expressionistic side in his art mother and chi child even here this is expressionism as i don't see too much uh, constructivism despite those so-called mountains or peaks uh, kind of triangular in the back uh cafe concept now here we see influences from uh, Picasso and Georges Braque. He, uh, in, in some works, the, the influences are, are, are very obvious, but he transforms them somehow. Uh, he is able to, 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 to transform to an extent. A girl, a girl portrait. Um, so again, we, he, at, the, at, the, at the end of the presentation, you see some abstract works but he was uh, continuously uh, pendulating uh, between figurative art and uh, and abstract art alike. But he was a prodigious uh, painter. He produced lots of paintings. Uh, Jews forced to wash windows from 1941. And here it is, another drawing which is... Uh, you know, uh, somehow in the spirit of the great uh, German uh, expressionist uh, artists. I think his ambivalences are also expressed by the fact that he married a Catholic girl and not a rich girl from what I understood. Uh, uh, a girl from, uh, you know, the lower uh, positions of, of society and also uh, a Catholic. This is also this also says something about his complexity. He didn't follow. He even had uh, conflicts with his family because of this. Three women in Malta. Uh, I keep saying to myself, and I keep saying to you, never give up on art. Try to practice both. If you cannot unite them. Um, Practice them uh, alternately or separately, but never give up on art because art will nourish your architecture. I'm convinced of it because it nourishes your, your, your soul, your heart, your emotions. And, uh, and then you, you, you are freer to even do architecture. Two Nazi soldiers abusing a Jew and tearing out his beard. Here it is. There were tragic things, you know, uh, for example, the Iron Guard even teared the beard of uh, Nikolai Yorga and killed him. It's so very sad, you know, I mean, uh, let's hope uh, such tragedies will not happen again, but I'm not optimistic, I have to confess. There is something in the human beings, we are capable of cruelty, we are capable of terrible things, yes, we are also capable of beautiful things, but we are also capable of, of terrible ones. And, uh, you know, how, how to explain the calamity of the Second World War? How to explain that people who actually were longing for uh, white uh, architectures like Hitler, the same people also uh, created the, the concentration camps and the gas chambers uh, and uh, the, 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 the horrible uh, 
uh, tragedy of the Second World War. It, 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 it is hard to comprehend. Architecture. Um, now, you don't see this map very well, uh, but you can find, I have here the, the links, and you don't need them from me, actually. You can find them yourselves. There are links uh, published in Romania where you can uh, find even these maps. That's where I took them with location of his buildings on, on the map of Bucharest. Uh, he built in the northern part of Bucharest and uh, in the central part. And uh, fortunately, his buildings are scattered within the city. And this, this made uh, the destruction by the, uh, you know, the, the angelic uh, communist regime uh, difficult. That's why they survived, because they were not clustered in, in, in one single place, but uh, scattered within the city. And they, they escaped the, the enlightened megalomania of the uh, former uh, president of uh, Romania, which created uh, horrible things. Uh, Henri Daniel Villa, uh, in the date is 1927, so he was 32 years old. I understood that at the beginning of his career, he didn't have the right of signature. He didn't uh, complete his studies and uh, other people signed for him. He opened uh, an office and he had commissions, but uh, from a circle of friends and you know uh, acquaintances of his family. Uh, and um, uh, you know, he was able to build. Later on, I understood he got in the end the, the, the certificate or whatever it was needed. Uh, so this is an early work by him, 1927. At 32 in Bucharest, the building still exists. And uh, yeah, you, you say uh, it's not a radical being, being, being uh, unless you you contemplate this. Uh, it was probably not finished, you know, some kind of a balcony was supposed to be here, but uh, the, the protective uh, vertical elements are missing. So I guess, uh, you know, opening the door could indeed danger your life endanger your life, which probably the Dadaist would have loved. But I'm sure this was not intended, uh, intended like this. It was just not uh, finished. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, it would make Marcel Yankui an even more interesting uh, creator if he, if he did it intentionally like this. Anyway, um, but uh, surprisingly, I, I discovered these plans associated with the building you just saw, and somehow they don't seem to match, unless, unless you study them more carefully, which I didn't. But uh, somehow, when I look at these plans, I don't expect this building. Now, that's because I don't see it from a side. Anyway. Um, This is a different building. This was misplaced. Sorry about this. And we are going to arrive at it. Now, Herman, actually, this was his middle name, Herman, the Herman Yanku building. He built buildings for himself, for his father, for his family, for his wife even. Uh, and um, we are going to see them. This was actually earlier, from 1926. I understood his painting studio was at the top of the building. But the building now is in a uh, terrible shape. I, I hope it is not so any longer, but I discovered pictures of the so-called present that are alarming, like here, um, still standing, but uh, you know, uh, with some pain in, uh, in its chest, so to speak, the building. And yes, uh, this is probably where his studio was, although I don't know if this is not a more recent addition, because, you know, as opposed to the buildings in the West, which, which uh, you know, uh, are recognized or recognizable as, as buildings built by, uh, you know, important architects, in our country and in our city, what we see is this, you know, it's neglect is, uh, the buildings are abused, uh, you know, uh, they, 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 are, they are not uh, revered. And uh, in as much as I like the, the, the um, you know, the uh, non-conventionality, I, I have to deplore 
the fact that you know such buildings are, are uh, you know treated as if they are uh, you know uh, architectural garbage in a way look at the building this is a building this is uh, who knows who inhabits this building i mean look at this this is a building by one of the important cultural figures of, of romania you know i mean this building here is uh, so called uh, gloriously you know uh, kept and this one i mean look what's going on here is a total uh, total disrespect for the building but but looking at the good side of things if if we are to see a good side of the things sometimes but no 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 i shouldn't say this you know i shouldn't say that uh, you know these accidental interventions are uh, actually adding something to the building uh, no although although this hybridity could be explored in architecture where you allow even the ugly and the disorderly to invade the building and and from the conflict between the initial intentions the intentions that animated the architect and and um, the present uh, state of the building there is there is this tension after all in, in my opinion although there is misery here this building is more alive than this one this one is conventional is banal is you name it, it, it Yes, it's very ordered with a little mechanism, the, the windows and the, you know, uh, the chromatic uh, so-called harmony. But this one, anyway, I ventured on a difficult ground. Jean Fuchs Villa from 1927. This was, in the words of, uh, of uh, uh, Marcel Iancu, the first modernist building in Bucharest. Prima casa modernista din București după cum afirma chiar Iancu, construit între anii 1927-1929. Uh, let's recall, Villa Savoie was built in 1928. So, almost exactly then, this building was built. Vecini, this, is, this is what uh, I read, an interesting text, so I, I read it in Romanian. Vecinii nu se dumiresc de ce în locul vechilor geamuri strămoșești, casa nouă are o fereastră care merge de la un capăt la altul al zidului ca o vitrină de morgă. Ochiul de pod, de obicei pe acoperiș, e aici în triplu exemplar ca niște cabine clasa 1 de vapor transatlantic, iar garajul pare sucursal a crematoriului central. Now, I don't think this text is by him, it's by someone in the, you know, in some journal, in some magazine. But isn't it strange that, uh, you know, two words, morgue and crematorio, are connected with the aesthetics of this building? I think it is. Uh, from the perspective of the present, there is no connection at all uh, between this building and the morgue and the crematorium. But this was a... Uh, you know, an evaluation, a perception at that time about this building. The first modernist building in Bucharest, as Marcel Iancu uh, named it. Now you see here the three circular windows. This is almost like a trademark for him. Uh, he uses them uh, rather often. The plants are interesting, you know. Uh, they have a certain geometrical viscerality. They, they, there is movement here. It's clear that Marcel Iancu was also a plastic artist, and uh, something is shown in, 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 the, in the plants of that. He was a skillful architect, uh, and uh, you know, just try to imagine, you know, being uh, at that time uh, promoting uh, modernity, uh, you know, in, in Bucharest. He did. And he was lucky to have the, the, the chance to, to, to build. Villa Maria Lambru, in 1928, at the time when uh, Villa Savoie was, uh, was built again, I remember once I had a, a dialogue with uh, Kenneth Frampton and he knew about uh, Marcel Iancu. Uh, and uh, I think I think Frampton admired the hybridity of 
Marcelliancus uh, modernism. We didn't talk about it, but uh, this is my feeling that it, it's a, an impure modernism in a way. I, I don't think this diagonal here belongs to him. No, this is uh, some some of the malfunctions of uh, of, uh, of Romania. But even that, in a way, is interesting. Maybe we can explore such things in in our projects or your projects, uh, to be more uh, precise. Um, Villa Florica Kihoescu on Kiselev, 1930. This one is, uh, you know, uh, an inviolable, uh, you know, uh, place to, to to have a chat around a nice uh, coffee. Uh, you can tell that our space, our cultural space, and our physical space um, have uh, have specificities. There is a smell of the Balkan. You know, there is something uh, a touch of uh, of the orient a little bit and uh, it's not you can tell but this is also part of the charm that uh, that part of romania has and i i think uh, it's important to identify this charm and not lose it i'm talking about present uh, interventions so to speak Uh, here we can tell there is comfort, obviously, and the building was uh, was well preserved. But if we look at this interior, and I'm sure he didn't have anything to do with the choice of pieces of furniture and so on, but his building welcomed even various styles of pieces of furniture. In other words, this was not a uh, Joseph Hoffman villa where, you know, or an Adolf Loss villa, you know, where you cannot change much. Here, well, okay, maybe his building is not so strikingly original, but uh, it accommodates itself to life in various times rather well. And, uh, you know, I mean, look at this abstract, uh, you know, uh, stained glass window and, uh, you know, the light fixtures, you know, they, what do they have in common? Nothing, or with a chair. Now, of course, these light fixtures, uh, I don't think they, they were his choice or the chair, but who knows? Maybe they were. But it's interesting, this dialogue between the past and the present, between modernity and, uh, and something else. I think uh, this lack of inhibitions is, uh, is good. Now, the... <laughs> As I mentioned, the, the round uh, openings, the, 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 round, uh, the round windows, um, the, the, the chairs, at least the one on the left doesn't seem so glorious, but uh, anyway, uh, I see a flag there. It's probably an embassy or something there. No, I don't recognize the flag. Anyway. This, this, this space of Bucharest, of, of Romania, which is so full of contradictions, of tensions, is also rich. You know, it's, uh, it says something about us. And uh, I, I think we can explore, you can explore in your projects, this, uh, this hybridity of the cultural space of, of Bucharest and uh, beyond Bucharest, of Romania in general. You know, at the beginning, that's how the building looked off from one side. You know, it's almost unrecognizable. Or this, which I like very much. I even thought of using this uh, view for the, the invitation I made. He collaborated also with artists. He had a friend, Milica Patrashku, a very important uh, plastic artist. And uh, so the fact and 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 I, I I would invite you to also uh, contemplate inviting uh, you know students from the Beaux Arts from from the the art school uh, or uh, you know after graduation to continue to do this uh, connect with art because uh, it, it will be a good thing. Maybe you can do the art yourselves or you can invite artists to collaborate on your uh, future projects. 
it would be interesting perhaps to compare the villas of Adolf Loss with the villas of uh, Marcellianco for another time, maybe next year on his birthday. There you see here, there are differences. Look at this, this glass wall, which we saw in the previous pictures, and then what's going on here. So there is a tension all the time. Look, small window, large window, small window, and this is almost glass continuously. And uh, it, it's his continuous fluctuation between uh, what we call tradition and what we call innovation. Now, Clara Yanku Villa, that was his wife, uh, Clara, 1931, I think of a perfectly legitimate uh, building uh, inserted into the uh, front, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the urban front of this uh, area, of this area in, uh, in, um, in, um, in Bucharest. Then Kiryat, <laughs> his forehand. Some of his buildings were, you know, attacked by the graffiti artists. Uh, what can we do? There are a lot of uh, artistry in the hearts of Romanians. Uh, but, but look at this building, look at this building, look even at this building. Is this, this uh, impurity of the urban uh, um, landscape, if I am to call it so, that makes, I, I think, Bucharest interesting? irritating too for the purist. Jean Juster, Villa, 1931. Um, here it is. Now, I don't know if all buildings in Bucharest with these round windows belong to Marcel Yanku, but uh, <laughs> a number of them do. Now, look at the building on the right, which was built probably very recently, and this building, which was built uh, eight years ago, more than eight years ago. How do you explain it? This is a building built almost eight years ago, and this is a building which is probably still in construction, I mean, at the time when the picture was taken. Isn't this a regression? I mean, we didn't evolve, did we? I don't know what that flag is doing there, but uh, anyway. Villa Paul Wexler, Wexler Strada Grigore Mora, number 36. Um, yes, uh, this is uh, without too many ambiguities. It's clearly a modern building. It moves me that a man who was involved with the Dada to the point where he actually founded that movement with three other uh, uh, people uh, was also a builder, you know? Uh, uh, there is no trace of uh, negation or nihilism here. Uh, this is uh, indeed, to an extent at least, architecture is the art of ya saying, yes, you know, um, for example, Wolf Prix was asked, ask himself, what is architecture? And his answer was, yes, uh, in his, uh, you know, whimsical way, he said kind of similar to what uh, Bjarke Ingel said when, when he also said that it, it, it is, a, you know, yes is more. Villa Paul Iluce, și laboratorul, 1931. Really, the Romanian language is beautiful, and I, I should do something about it because I talk about English, but I become emotional when I read in Romanian because even these letters C and A uh, and um, anyway, Villa Paul Iluce, și laboratorul. Strada Olari. 
he has in in some of his buildings uh, he has such windows where he becomes a graphic artist where he plays you know with um, you know certain fragmentations it's clearly a, a, an artistic uh, you know uh, gesture uh, Paul de Chap Capier, um, Champier, I don't know, uh, Strada Dimitri, won't you? I have to tell you, uh, I have a friend, he's from Ecuador, and he uh, uh, obtained his master at Harvard. He, he studied at a different school also in the United States, but then he uh, was accepted in the master program at Harvard and they came with their class to Bucharest. This was about, I don't know, uh, 20 years ago. And, uh, and he, uh, no, no, I, 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 I didn't tell that, about 10, 10, 12 years ago. And he told me that they loved Bucharest. Now, I don't know what they visited, but they, they liked the city very much. And two years ago, I, I uh, in Vienna, I met three students at the the, uh, the, uh, the Academy of Arts in Vienna, who came at our dorm, the Erasmus dorm, and talked about uh, you know some some plans they had to to propose some projects for Bucharest, and they also loved Bucharest. So, you know, I know there are problems in in our city, but I also think is is uh, there is a potentiality in 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 those very problems and look at look at this you know this is the building by Marcellianco this is a uh, older building or uh, maybe not so much older you know and here another one I mean there are so many suggestions here for a very interesting and rich architecture you know if you study just these three buildings which are so incongruent uh, you you can uh, you can uh, propose something interesting. There was anti-Semitism against uh, against uh, Marcellianco. That's why he left. He loved, I think, Bucharest and he loved Romania, but he was attacked, even by Cella de la Vrancia. You know, the, uh, there is this side of the Romanian uh, culture, you know, where we could become intransigent. Let's not forget, again, the Iron Guard killed uh, Nicolae Iorga. Uh, the Immobile Proprietar Necunoscut, 1935, Strada Stefan Lucian, a great, great, great painter, Lucian. A, a remarkable apartment building, isn't it? Uh, and um, yeah, he built also some larger, larger apartment buildings. Uh, we are going to see them. But this is a, this is a good one. Now, of course, welcome to our region. You know, we have uh, this kind of uh, <laughs> of interventions, which probably do not add much nobility to the building, but uh, they are about who we are. Uh, here we have uh, the, his uh, beloved uh, circles, this time double in, in number, six instead of three. And yes, Bucharest, Romania, you know, there is, uh, you know, this, this uh, uh, Adolf Loss would call it the criminal tendency of the graffiti artist. Uh, they are tattooing the building, but there is something li alive here, even if we are displeased by this uh, so-called uh, alive uh, intervention, but uh, yeah. And this is an artwork by Milica Patrashku. I don't know exactly where it is on the facade of the building, but again, I think we are to appreciate the fact that Marcel Yanku invited an artist to participate, to contribute, to embellish, to add something to the building. Uh, and we see here the act of weaving, that very weaving, which is now very uh, fashionable in a school like Sayark. Here we had uh, eight years ago or so, Milica Petrașcu, uh, you know, incorporating a figurative work having to do with the, uh, with the, with the, with the, with with the textile arts 
very nice. Collaborate with artists. Uh, you will, you will, they will earn something from the collaboration, and you will earn something from the collaboration. It's probably something wrong with me, but I, I love even this dirt here on the wall. You know, <laughs> truly, I am emotional because this is our this is our world. We are not Germans. We are not French. We are not. We are as we are with problems, with miseries, but also with qualities. It's something. You know, yes, yes, yes. It would have been glorious if this was all white and clean and without these uh, miserable things here. But uh, I don't know. This is who we are. And, uh, you know, the building is still standing, thank God. And it was built by, uh, and look, the inside, the apartment, I took this material from someone who lives in this apartment. I love this, you know. Uh, the architect provided this sh shelf here, and then uh, the owner of the apartment uh, added uh, what was missing in a way. And these are gestures of affection, affection for a little alcove in, in, in the world. And these small things are important, or here. But this is very similar to what uh, Carme Pinos, the celebrating an important architect from Barcelona, is doing now. Very similar. But this Marcel Yanku did uh, around eight years ago. And look at this. <laughs> Not bad. I mean, really, uh, it's very different from, uh, you know, uh, certain things at Villa Savoie. But I like the fact that, I don't know, it's it, this detail, you know, it somehow says something about his relationship with the, with the past, with history, with the arcade, with the arch. And here there is a gesture of uh, sophistication, architectural sophistication. There is separation between these two openings, but also continuity. So here he created an opening made out of two openings that are both discontinuous and continuous. And this is a quality. And look at that uh, TV there, you know, sitting on something which at first I thought was some kind of a thing. Uh, interesting. Anyway. And then the ineffable. Uh, uh, you know, delicate uh, graphic work of this uh, stained glass window. Surprises, surprises. And flowers. Yeah, I, I, I made lots of presentations since May last year, but I didn't see in all those many buildings, glorious as they were, I didn't see f uh, flowers very often in, in inside the rooms that I showed. But in Bucharest, Romanians love flowers, and you no, know, here it is. The flower is here. Bravo to it. Immobilul Basaltin. This is uh, in Piazza Charles de Gaulle. Uh, it's uh, it was an important building, and I hope it still stands. Um, uh, you will see some some sad uh, some sad uh, proofs that uh, not everything is beautiful about us. This is the building. Not bad. But unfortunately, this is a very old picture. Look at the at the car on the left, and uh, and uh, then you'll see some some pictures from uh, more recent uh, times. Although I read that uh, Skelele are up, meaning uh, you know the uh, some efforts were put into into uh, taking care of the building. Unfortunately, the resolution for uh, for this building of some of the pictures is not great, uh, but uh, now look, what can you do? Uh, this is how it was. I don't know if it was published on uh, in the Life magazine. I see their life. Uh, he had exhibitions in New York and uh, in various places in Western Europe. Uh, but, but look, the Romanian uh, artist uh, is um, at attracted by, uh, by uh, anything that uh, could receive some spray. And uh, what can we do? You know, 
uh, the city doesn't say that it is illegal to do this. And, uh, you know, for some reason, the, the anonymous uh, artist is uh, attracted by uh, a building, in this case, by Marcellianco. Or look here, vandalism, of course, because the building was for a number of years, you see, it has no windows, uh, was uh, attracting uh, vandalism. Unconsciously, perhaps, these graffiti artists refused to accept the death of the building, so they brought in color and uh, cryptical uh, uh, graphic work. But I understood that, uh, at least what I read at the time when, when that article was published, that, uh, that there were plans to, to uh, restore it. Villa Florica Reich, 1936. Um, so, 85 years ago. Uh, David Heinovich and Zygmunt Vatashescu, uh, building 1937. You see the R A R H uh, Marcellianku, and the engineers were also mentioned. This is interesting. I saw it in on at least two buildings by him where the name of the architect was, architect was shown, but also the name of the engineer. This is good. Because the architect is not the only one who builds the building. Without the engineer, he might not do it. So the, 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 the engineer should be recognized. And this is the, the plan. Um, I don't know. They, it's, it might be that uh, it was built a little differently from what the drawing shows. We see here a bathroom right, right in the most, in a way, the most prestigious place in the building is this corner. And it's a bathroom here, isn't it? So I know that certain... Uh, People disagree that uh, the bathroom can be placed in the on the facade of the building, but this is not only that it is on the facade, but in the most important uh, corner of the building, similar to this one. But here there is no window, although here there seems to be an equally uh, you know unglorious uh, piece of uh, you know you imagine what it what is there. So anyway, it seems uh, in Zurich, um, Marcellianku was not uh, taught to, you know, avoid such, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> unpleasant, uh, in between quotation marks, um, uh, unpleasant um, situations. Villa Hermina Hasner, uh, 1937, clear modernism, uh, and... Um, yeah, he, he borrowed you know, the, the horizontal uh, long window. Um, but everywhere, as you can see, his buildings are not treated as monuments. They are not untouchable. Quite the opposite. They are, uh, you know, uh, they receive transformations. So we see, it seems we are relaxed about... Uh, in other ways, in other words, there are no laws against, uh, you know, modifying uh, a building built by an important architect. No. Uh, this is an old picture. Uh, the circles uh, identify it as a building by Marcellianku. Uh, and uh, here is the, 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 the facade. Poveshku Plimbel. Uh, it could go the other way as well, Plimbări cu povești. You know, Plato and Nietzsche, they both address the problem, the so-called problem of, of thinking when you walk. And I, I forgot exactly who said what, but one said that you cannot think when you walk, când te plimbi, 
And the other one said the very opposite, that only when you walk, you can actually think. And it's possible that they thought of different kinds of thinking. In as much as when Wolf Prix was asked, what do you recommend uh, students in architecture and young architects and so on? He said, don't think. But when you don't think, you actually keep thinking, but in a different way. Maybe you think with your heart, with your hand, uh, with your stomach even. Uh, there are different kinds of thinking, not just with the brain. So I guess that's what Wolf Prix meant when he said, don't think. He probably meant think in a different way, with your whole be being maybe, not just with the brain. Poveshku plimbari. Okay. Um, so if we look at these pictures, we understand that Marcel Yanku was operating, was building, was uh, active in a, in, a, in a cultural space, which welcomed uh, contradictions, conflict sometimes, impurity, hybridity. And I think all of these, all of the above are actually potential qualities. Now, this is one of his most important buildings, the Soli Gold Building uh, in 1934. Again, Milica Patrashko with her artwork uh, is uh, the goddess Diana, the hunting goddess uh, who probably inspires uh, Yon Syriac and other lovers of killing animals. Sorry for the sarcasm. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say sorry. I really did, don't understand why, why some men uh, usually in, uh, in a certain position love to kill animals, uh, you know, and nobody says anything. As long as they are millionaires and billionaires, it's fine. Uh, it's clear this building is not for everybody, but um, it, it's a good building. And you see, there are these touches of almost uh, something almost baroque here. You know, if you look at the building from the outside, there are there is no indication that inside you might find such, uh, uh, you know, fluidities of a baroque, uh, uh, you know, uh, spirit. But he has he has many elements in his work. And here again, you know, it's a decorative panel, but it's 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 it shows uh, it shows uh, aesthetical concern. Marcel Yanku, Marcel Yulu Yanku. I didn't know about this Yulu. I saw Herman there, but uh, anyway. And again, the engineer, Maximilian Marcus, Marcel and Marcus, nice engineer constructor. So he was not inhibited, as he was not inhibited and inhibiting in his painting either. Anything goes with Marcel Yanku in a way, you know, is, uh, yeah, he has no inhibitions. Although he was uh, an introverted uh, young boy, as we read, and, uh, you know, inclined for meditation and contemplation. Look at the plan. The plan is just like some of his paintings. It's a, it's a clash there, you know, it's, it's a, it's, it's a plan that uh, shows a certain complexity. And then, you know, lo look at these windows and then look at these windows, you know, and then look at these windows. It's, it, it, anything goes almost. But this is the space, the cultural space of, of, of Bucharest. It's a space of uh, contradiction, of conflict, of hybridity. 
I personally think we can learn more from Bucharest than from uh, Las Vegas. Maybe one should write a, a paper or uh, get a PhD degree with a with a with a uh, with a work uh, with a possible title, learning from Bucharest. In my opinion, I mean, I, it's not an opinion; it's a conviction. We can learn more from Bucharest than from Las Vegas. I never understood why Venturi thought that we can learn anything from Las Vegas. No, maybe only human destitution. You know, what can you learn from a, from a city built on uh, uh, exploiting the naives with the casinos and so on? What is to be learned from there? It, it, it's, it's, the, 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 it's the space of inauthenticity par excellence. We saw this one by Milica Patrashku and it's right at the entrance. And maybe this is an idea, no? You design an apartment building, invite an artist or you do an artwork yourself right at the entrance to welcome you, to, to, to give you something, no? Uh, to you, the one who crosses the threshold between the outside and the inside, at that very place, it's important. And this window does the same thing. You know, it's a window that celebrates this uh, important moment, the transitional moment between the outside and the inside. When you enter the building, something should welcome you. Frida Cohen building 1935, a larger building, as you can see. Uh, yes, disfigured by the passage of time and the grayness of uh, where we all arrive at one point, but it's still a building that um, potentially at least has some uh, has some dignity. Jacques Costin building. Now here actually there are three buildings. Uh, he designed uh, even at the beginning of his career, uh, but I couldn't find pictures with seven buildings uh, where some of his earliest works, if not the earliest. Here also he designed three buildings, one near the other, and look, welcome to Bucharest, welcome to Romania. But here we have a beautifully designed uh, entrance door, clearly the work of Marcellianco, and then, you know, the anonymous artists who had to express themselves, who had to criminally, so to speak, uh, attack uh, the building. But all in all, you know, these imperfections uh, collaborate to a, to a certain richness, which doesn't say no to misery, but uh, assumes it in a way. And yes, you could say I have a strange turn of mind, but um, what is the alternative? The whiteness of the Grosse Halle of, of uh, Albert Speer in, uh, in, in Berlin uh, done uh, for that uh, extremely modest uh, man, Adolf Hitler. I prefer this by far. I love Bucharest, I confess. Villa Paoli Iluce, and I love letter C and letter A. By the way, of letter A is actually the fourth letter of my family name. My family name is not Coma, but Coma. But uh, when I started to publish in Secolul 20, the editor in chief, Dan Haulika, said, I am uh, superstitious, uh, superstitious. Uh, I will never have someone with the name Coma in, in my published in my magazine, in our magazine. So he changed it to Coma. And uh, then when I crossed the ocean, it was the same because, the, you know, in the United States, there is no letter A, uh, but uh, my, th that belongs in my uh, birth certificate. I'm sorry, I don't have the Tzu. I would have loved to have the Tzu as well. Here we have one near the other, two beautiful letters that Romanians have, Tzu, Tzu, and A, uh, Iluza. What a great name. Casa Paul de Chapier, this is a kind of a French name. We saw this already, uh, I will not insist. 
Okay. And again, we see the, 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 the you know, I don't know about these spirals, but um, maybe, maybe they belong to, to, to uh, Marcel Yanku. And pe urmele lui Marcel Iancu, this is a website where you can find uh, other things about uh, Marcel Iancu, Via București, pe urmele lui Marcel Iancu, prin cartierul evreiesc. Uh, then another one la nivelul ochiului. <laughs> I love Romanian language, really. I should, I should uh, attempt to, to, to teach Romanian to everybody outside of Romania. Arhitectul Marcel Iancu. Now we go to Israel, where he um, didn't, he, I understood he found the employment uh, for the government uh, working for uh, urban matters, urbanism and landscape design, but I don't, didn't see any building actually built by him, although maybe his own house and museum uh, that we are going to see, maybe they were built by him. In his studio in, uh, I don't know how to pronounce, Einhod, Einhod, uh, it's, it's where he lived and worked. Here is the painter at a certain age. Uh, and he was indeed a dedicated artist. He was born to, to do art and he did until uh, he, his life ended. Uh, he was uh, old when he died. I don't know, 88 years old or something like this. I don't know how he kept that shirt so clean while painting. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, this is the colony of the artist in the, in the deserted uh, Arab village that, that he found and he wanted to create an artist colony and he did there. Um, the Yanko, Yanko Dada Museum, he turned his back on the Dada movement, but strangely in his later life, he called his museum the Yanko Dada Museum and uh, obviously, he, he was attached, he remained attached to the Dada. And uh, otherwise, why would he have placed the word Dada in the, in the very name uh, of, of the museum? Yanko Dada Museum. Maybe, maybe he thought that uh, that word Dada had a greater resonance than his own name. And it was, uh, I'm sure he shows inside the museum, you know, things that were connected with his beginnings in Zurich at Cabaret Voltaire with the Dada movement. So we are in a, now in Israel and uh, I didn't see pictures. I searched for pictures with uh, the art colony. Uh, I wanted to see other buildings. I didn't, just the, just the museum. And now I end the presentation on Marcel Iancu and let's wish him happy birthday with some other paintings that he did uh, in Israel. Um, you know, this, you can, you can tell the, the, the expressionistic side of his painting. And uh, although he's considered as a, you know, a, a constructivist, but I would say the expressionist side, uh, especially in his uh, painting, is uh, uh, perhaps uh, more important here as well. It shows angst. Uh, yeah, it's, it's unavoidable to discern some influence coming from Picasso. Yeah, other influences maybe, you know, via Cezanne perhaps, but uh, he transformed them. He, his personality was strong enough to, to um, absorb influences and uh, transform them. Uh, 
an interesting man and we should be happy that uh, we we had such an architect and such an artist born in this uh, in this uh, cultural space this is called uh, the artist and the muse even here there are some influences anyway and maybe the dark side but also the humorous side of marcel yanku he was a very prolific artist and also with diverse interests as you can see i don't know enough uh, in fact i don't know almost anything about his uh, contributions in theory but that is a subject which should be explored and uh, he did a series for don quixote La Mancha, Don Quixote, and here are, you know, here is Don Quixote with uh, Sancho Panza. Uh, I, I guess he was preoccupied by this, uh, the idealism of the, of the Spanish uh, knight, uh, you know, searching for, uh, in a way, for some kind of a Fata Morgana. But uh, maybe he had something of a Don Quixote himself, maybe. Uh, he painted several paintings, uh, and probably there are other works relating to this theme, Don Quixote. And this is a picture from his museum. Um, very civilized and clean. <laughs> Hello, Bucharest, is, or goodbye, Bucharest. Now we are in, uh, in Israel. Now, no, in, in terms of museums, uh, the museums in Bucharest are also uh, like this, but uh, this is a private museum. He built it himself, and I think he lived in this building, uh, or he built it on the same estate. Another uh, artwork with Don Quixote de la Mancha, uh, searching for his uh, beloved, I forgot her name. Uh, I should remember her name anyway. Uh, she did have a name. She was not just a linguistic uh, Fata Morgana. Uh, we saw already this artwork, and I think this is the last image of, of the, this presentation, and I, I'm not sure what I see here. But uh, somehow this image made it to be the, the last one in my presentation of, uh, of Marcel Yanku. So, happy birthday, Marcel Yanku. And now, uh, as I promised, I will show you another interesting architect uh, who uh, emigrated to Israel just as Marcel Yanku did. And I don't think you know of him, and I think you should know about him because he was and is a remarkable, uh, a remarkable architect. That is Zvi Hacker. Born in Poland. And as opposed to Daniel Lipskind, he emigrated to Israel. And this is very interesting. And he could be compared with uh, Daniel Lipskind, being born in the same place, but emigrated one to the United States, that is Daniel Lipskind and Zvi Hacker emigrating to Israel. Here is the man, he's still alive. And uh, a very, a very interesting architect. I had one, once the chance to be in an exhibition where he also exhibited at the storefront for art and architecture. Alfred Neumann, Zvi Hacker, Eldar Sharon, Dubiner Apartment House, 1961-1964. Look at this. Uh, you know, you, no one can deny the sculptural uh, impetus of this building. Uh, this is, uh, you know, it's a Bucharest version, and this is its Israel version. I'm joking, it's the same building, but here it was refurbished as opposed to uh, some, or at least, uh, or, or even most buildings by Marcel Yanku. But this is a, you know, a tour de force in, in, in terms of uh, sculpturalness. And you'll see some others even more uh, intriguing or provocative. Zvi Hacker, Israel, 1960s. Now he worked here with two or three other architects. It's true, but but his uh, his uh, uh, contribution was probably uh, essential.
Now, the uh, laboratory building in Haifa, Neumann and Hacker, they did several buildings together. So Zvi Hacker and Neumann, I forgot his uh, first name, also an important work uh, architect. Uh, look here, you know, uh, in, in concrete, in exposed concrete. But uh, no one could deny the, the, the architectural interest of this building. And you'll also see a city hall, very, very interesting, almost uh, futuristic. You would say this was not, this is not on Earth, it's on the moon or on, the, on Mars. It is clear that architecture is not just about function, but also about form. After all, what do we see here? We see a formal manipulation that, that shows uh, the will of the architect to express himself also in uh, you know, artistically uh, viable forms. Again, you know, this could have been done indifferently or uh, not indifferently, and it is done not indifferently. Ramot housing. This is a, also a very interesting housing complex by Zvi Hacker. Uh, very large. Uh, and look, look, apartment buildings don't need to be naive. I mean, uh, you know, uh, yes, even naive, you know, they, they can be done in many ways and uh, creatively so. And uh, this is what I would encourage everybody to do. In other words, an apartment building shouldn't be just a prism, you know, uh, with some holes in the walls. Uh, this one will come back to this one because it's very, very interesting. Uh, sorry, now there are some, some pictures that uh, show fragments of, of some diverse buildings by him, but we'll, 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 we'll come back to them in detail. Some graphic works also. He also, just like Marcel Iancu, had a... a an artistic side and has an artistic side because he's still alive. Um, the spiral apartment house in Ramat from 1989. Look at this building. Talking about hybridity, this is an assumed hybridity, an assumed uh, even in co in co incoherence. Although you'll see in the plans, because I'll show also drawings. There is a, an exploration on the spiral motif, as you can see here. So it's not, it appears to be disordered, but it's not because uh, he works uh, with a spiral and we are not so accustomed to, to the spiral uh, presence in, um, in, in architecture, in, at least in, uh, in, uh, in modernity. Although let's remember, Brinkush painted, uh, drew, drew, drew a portrait of James Joyce exactly with a spiral. Um, the spiral represents a scandal for intelligence, or not for intelligence, but for reason, because it, the spiral is about becoming. So it has an open ending, uh, an open end. It's not like the circle. The circle is static. The spiral is dynamic. The circle has to do with to be, and the spiral has to do with becoming and uh, to become. And uh, yes, look here, an apartment building by Zvi Hacker. Um, I'm not happy with this presentation. I should, uh, I have here images. Uh, I, I should have looked at this presentation before I, I offer myself to, to, to make it, but I hope you will not regret. There is some, some unwelcome disorder here because this image is from a chapel for the, the Israeli military, but we are, I'm going to present it later, I hope. Uh, it should not have had that uh, place there. Uh, this is another, you know, apartment building by him. Uh, Autopia. This is a. Uh, um, I'm not happy with this presentation, but but uh, I, I apologize. But I also think that uh, it is a, a, a stirring up for you to to check out the works of this man. Uh, this is a more recent work. The spiral is also present, as you can see, it's strange the name, auto, autopia, meaning auto, utopia. Uh, this is a school he built uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Berlin, 
actually of all places and we are going to see it again the housing complex i i, I hope i'll come I'll, 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 I'll look at these works more in detail later. This is a city hall he built in, um, I don't know exactly the name of the city in, uh, but look at this city hall, can you believe it? Now, the Ra Ramot Paulin apartments in East Jerusalem, uh, there is something kind of a little bit similar done in Rotterdam but this is done by uh, Tzvi Hacker and they built it. And, and this is, these are not, uh, you know, uh, apartments for uh, extraterrestrials. These are actually kind of, it's social housing. These are not expensive uh, uh, apartments. And uh, yes, just like in Bucharest, people allow themselves to, to uh, make interventions but uh, it's a very interesting uh, housing complex, uh, at least uh, aesthetically or visually, we cannot deny that it is interesting. And look what is going on here. You know, so uh, in a way, architecturally, uh, I mean, as opposed to Marcel Yanku, who, 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 who didn't build really in Israel, three hacker built. As you can see, all these buildings are done. In fact, I didn't see anything built in Poland by, uh, but but Zwickhecker also lived in Samarkand and he had an interesting and strange upbringing. Now, what we see here is a larger scale of a motif that uh, Jean Nouvel used it in his uh, L'Institut du Monde Arabe in Paris, like in a camera, you know, the diaphragm. This was not done by him, but uh, it's okay. The, his buildings allowed for, uh, uh, why am I showing now Kikutake here? Uh, yes, I know why, because, um, because Kikutake also worked with such polyeders and we'll see. This was uh, at, at the Expo Tower in Osaka in Japan by Kionore Kikutake, a metabolist architect, around the same time, you know, 50 years ago. Uh, here they are, but this was built for an expo, not, you know, a social housing in, uh, in Israel. So architecture as an idea cannot be limited to one off masterpieces, but should create an inspiring fabric of spaces and ways of living, a tapestry of human invention and aspiration. It is possible to imagine a vibrant urban tapestry, a city with many Tzvi hacker buildings while it is not possible to imagine the same with the singular buildings of, say, Zaha Hadid. This is what Lebius Woods wrote on, um, on Tzvi Hacker's architecture. And Lebius Woods was a friend of Zaha Hadid. And still, he, he, in this uh, uh, statement, he seems to favor uh, Tzvi Hacker. In other words, the buildings of Tzvi Hacker could still doesn't matter how strange or unique they might appear, they seem, seem to be able to, to connect with a, with a larger uh, context as opposed to, he thought, the buildings of Zaha Hadid. And this is maybe exactly because of the uh, lack of purity and, and they are not masterpieces, but, but they have within the, the, the ability uh, to 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 uh, to uh, not reject, you know, constructive efforts around them, as maybe you know the buildings uh, the the buildings by Zaha Lebia Sud seems to say are more aloof. I mean, these buildings are also you know striking and audacious and alarmingly so sometimes. But he thought that um, they 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 are not aloof, actually. And you see here all kinds of interventions, you know, done uh, a posteriori by, you know, uh, the inhabitants of the buildings. Talking about hybridity. You know, real art and real architecture cannot be totally legal. This is the, <laughs> the genuine statement that I tried to approximate earlier. Tzvi Hacker and he smiles and he's a handsome man and I, I, I like his smile. Is right. Real art and real architecture cannot be totally legal. 
let's reflect on the difference between law and rule. Um, so the interior of the is clearly a modest apartment, you know, maybe for someone unemployed, someone without work. It's okay. It's okay. I like it when, when good architects work for those uh, underprivileged. It's very nice as opposed to, you know, like UN Studio or others building for the very rich in Singapore or I don't know where. And you see this, this uh, handrail, this parapet is, is clearly not designed by three hackers, but it's okay. The building is still, uh, still functioning. So is, is this disponibility that the building has, like Lebia Suits mentioned, you cannot do this to a building by, by, by Zaha. No, you'll, uh, you'll simply not do it. It cannot be done. But in a building by three hectares, you can do it. Like here, he didn't propose this probably, or certainly that canopy at the top. No, no way. But somehow in the salad, in the architectural salad that, was, uh, that we are witnessing, they work. It's the, the, the imperfection of life. This is what we are witnessing, the beautiful Im imperfection of, of life. And I think it deserves the word beautiful because it is beautiful. Now, the Jewish school in Berlin that we already saw a picture or two, the sunflower, the snake, the Persephone, this is one John Haydock wrote on three hackers, uh, uh, this Heinz Galinsky Schule school is a Jewish school in Berlin that uh, that three hacker built. Uh, and you can find uh, more information about it on the Uncube uh, magazine. I like the work, the word Uncube. I think we should all Uncube ourselves as much as possible. And here are some drawings for the Jewish school in Berlin that Tzvi uh, Hacker did. And it was built. In fact, this is a view from the top. Why should the school be rectangular? I mean, are children rectangular beings? I don't think so. No, not at all. So why should the building be rectangular? I know that, I don't know. Uh, there is such a program in our schools of architecture and uh, you know uh, this is an original uh, school built by Tzvi Hacker uh, and uh, you know it shows that the, 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 the possibilities are limitless you know that you, you can do anything if you want to honor the spirit of the young look at this it's a school unfortunately unfortunately the building looks uh, indeed very interesting and engaging from the top, but much less from the, the eye view, uh, uh, the level of the eye, uh, and you'll see what I'm talking about. But the plan is actually very interesting because it's about this uh, vortex of energies, which in a school should be uh, present. Too bad it was, I don't know, the Germans maybe didn't, uh, there isn't at the level of the eye, there isn't enough viscerality, but from the air it is. And the drawings also show it. There is conflict, there is tension. Maybe he paid the price for uh, being too seduced by the, 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 the complexity of the plan that's why there is a risk, and I myself should uh, tell myself exactly this. When you work too much on the plan and you forget the, 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 the 3D reality, even the 4D reality of the building, uh, you see, uh, at, at the level of, uh, of the earth and of the, the eye of the viewer, the building is a little bit less, uh, uh, less, less visceral, maybe also because of the tectonics of the walls, uh, you know, um, it's a little bit cold for me what I see here, but from the top is indeed very interesting. Unfortunately, we have the trees which are, uh, uh, they are perfect, <laughs> if I am to use this problematic word. 
Uh, nothing wrong with the tree. The tree is always alive and sensitive and strong at the same time. And it's beautiful even when it doesn't have uh, leaves uh, in the spring or, or even flowers. Now uh, we can see why John Haydock uh, admired Tzvi Hacker because at least that house that I presented not uh, too long ago uh, on his work uh, built in the Netherlands is a little bit similar to what we see here. The snake. The snake, the snake came back to architecture and the zigzagging and the spiral. These are uh, forces that animate also some of the most interesting works uh, done after um, the demise of uh, postmodernism, especially in the work. And I mean, Zaha Hadid, that's why Lebia Suits compared uh, Zaha with Zvi Hacker, because uh, she also had thunderbolts and uh, snakes and uh, spirals. Uh, implicitly or explicitly in her work. Uh, too bad that this spiral, spiralic movement is not also uh, built in the, the, the essence of the building, not just in plan, but also in section. He, he was a little bit, I think, uh, the prisoner of uh, an obsession with the plan. Yet it is an interesting school. Yes, if he, I mean, if the students would be allowed to put some graffitis here, all the imper so-called imperfections, but vital imperfections of that housing complex that he built where the inhabitants uh, added uh, uh, peculiar ways of, uh, you know, so-called improving. Uh, mult. Uh, Razvan, please turn off the microphone. <laughs> or, or, or if you want to say something, please do so. Okay, so uh, three hacker. I, I still think uh, the most interesting part is the view from the top. I don't know why he didn't uh, work with these walls and allow them to be so white and clean and uh, I don't know, uh, but uh, the same building. A school, Tzvi Hacker. I mean, really, here only one thing is needed, the spray can of the graffiti artist. And then they will know how to make this building very alive, even from uh, the level of the, of the eye of the viewer. The Jewish Cultural Center in Duis Duisburg, Germany, 1996, 2000s. I don't know. Uh, I personally prefer his works in Israel. The Palmach Museum of History, this is a good work uh, in Tel Aviv, 1993, 1998. Uh, it's, it's here and, you know, here he uses a richer uh, tectonics than in, uh, in the works in Germany. Uh, and you see how important it is to have the wall vibrate, to have its porosity or uh, an opacity which is not flat. It's important, and I, I like this work. You know, I don't know about this, but this is—I uh, don't think his work is uh, some kind of uh, an advertising that was supposed to be here. But the building is uh, is, is is nice. The, sorry. Uh, thought it was the whole plan here, but we, we are going to see it, I think. But again, I, I like the different textures of the of the, the enclosures of the walls. They they have uh, natural materials and they, they they vibrate. It's a skin that is alive. 
as opposed to the skin of the building in the, the two buildings in Berlin, I would say. This is the plan, a museum. It has something of the, I'm thinking now of the plan of that uh, museum in Washington DC by IMP, two conflicting triangles, but they are a little bit uh, uh, less obvious here. It seems this man worked alone and certainly the, the drawings are done by his hand. Courageous tectonics, I confess. Why should we have only white flat surfaces? Why? Nature doesn't have them, so. Oh, these accidents are, are beautiful, you know, they, they are the, the, the you know, uh, the ambassadors of that yes to life that I mentioned. And uh, I, I like them very much. And uh, wasn't it Louis Kahn who said that the sun became aware of its own greatness when the shadow provoked by its uh, light, uh, you know, falling on, on a wall and the, sh you know, the shadows created, these are, these are signs of life. They are signs of, uh, of, of the sunlight. The shadow is announcing uh, the presence of the sunlight and, and here as well. So the dialectics between light and shadow are very, very important. I, I think it's a beautiful uh, fragment here of the building. It's a good work by Tzvi Hacker. And here is the architect. I saw similar pictures of, uh, with uh, Dan Hanganu, our other compatriot who uh, brilliantly served architecture in Canada, uh, just as Tzvi Hacker does here in Israel. Uh, unfortunately, in his later years, I have seen like this project he maybe he was unhappy that he didn't receive commissions any longer. He tried to win competitions. He didn't win. And in my opinion, his later works are not so brilliant, uh, but I think I'll show some here. Uh, uh, this is still from the, the school in Berlin. Um, sorry, this presentation is a little bit uh, uh, on a shaky ground. I have to, to, to revise it. But uh, all in all, it's an introduction to, to the work of this unknown architect from Poland, but uh, uh, who emigrated uh, to, um, uh, to Israel. You know, we only know of Daniel Lipskin, but I think at least in a few works, um, you know, Tzvi Hacker is, is not an inferior architect. The city hall, this one we saw already, I knew I have more detailed presentations in, in, within this presentation, is that city hall in the Bat Yam uh, in Israel, 1959-1963. So 80 years ago, uh, 70 years ago, this is what he built. And I think it's a, it's a great work uh, for a city hall, you know, a governmental uh, building. Look at this. You would say that this, is, this was built on, 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 on Mars or the moon, even by today's standards, this is a building that stands out as unconventional, 
you know, what is there on the top? And, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it is striking. It is from uh, 70 years ago, 1960. You know, uh, no, uh, I don't add properly, 60 years ago. If indeed 40 plus 20 makes 60. <laughs> anyway, a very interesting work, uh, truly. Uh, I mean, imagine yourself going to the city hall and, uh, you know, uh, discovering this building, which is playful, almost irresponsibly so, although it uses geometry and rhythm in a kind of regular way, but all in all, it's a, it's a futuristic building. color but you see the children are playing of course they are playing because the building is playing and it's playful now a synagogue in the desert this was built for the, the israeli army and this is probably one of the most striking re religious buildings built in the second half of the 20th century and the first half of the 21st century look at this it's a small synagogue, you know, but uh, <laughs> I think it's remarkable. And, uh, and you'll see pictures also from the inside. Now, why shouldn't the army be playful as well? Look at the soldiers there and look at the look at the interior you know it's it's remarkable that the, the israeli army uh, built such a work why not you you think you are in a science fiction movie no uh, you are in israel in 1960 as a, a building by Tzvi hacker it's not James Bond, it's not science fiction, no, it's not Hollywood. It's just a man of vision who had the courage to, and, uh, you know, all uh, uh, kudos to, 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 to the, the authorities that, you know, to the administration of the army there, that agreed to, be, to build this building. I totally agree with Einstein. Uh, creativity is contagious. Pass it on. So you could pass it on even to the army. Uh, and uh, this building does it. Yes, in the plan is a kind of regular, the hexagon, but, uh, um, you know, uh, the, the reality of the built work is uh, going beyond the, the ex explicitness of the, of the diagrammatic drawings. He obviously loved geometry, but he also loved spiral, the spiral. Playful, the playful three hacker. Now the Arab village of Ayn Rand. I, here you see something else from 1962. You know, these buildings are not uh, adventurous. They are kind of vernacular architecture built by a, you know, a trained architect. But I think they are excellent. And the, the use of the stone always helps. Now, he was an Israel and is an Israeli architect, but he builds for the Arabs. This is twice as beautiful. And that's what they should now do now too, you know, uh, the Israelis, instead of having uh, a uh, terrible conflict with uh, with uh, the Arab population. And look at the uh, look at the site plan. The very nice site plan. The buildings are rather you know I mean they are rectangular and regular, but uh, the the plots of lands are not of land are not. Very simple houses, uh, but uh, well done. We 
we saw this one, we saw this one, we saw this one. I have to put some order into this presentation, but by maybe, you know, being about three hacker is okay like this too, although I'm not totally comfortable. Um, I like this conglomerate, you know, where you see the ideality of geometry uh, accepting even, uh, you know, it's opposite in a way. Uh, you know, Le Corbusier said life is always right in the end. And, you know, maybe, I mean, this part of the building does not belong to, to Zwie Hacker, nor does this one. By the, but they, 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 they uh, uh, participate into this, maybe, you know, uh, some might say cacophonic uh, uh, work. I don't know. It's, it's cohabitation. That's what it is. It's cohabitation uh, between the will of the architect and the will of the, of the inhabitants. And they clash sometimes, but that's okay too. You see, here is the purity. In a way, it's even, yeah, this is what happened in time, and this is what he proposed and built at first. So it's clear that life, in its complexity, uh, is reluctant to accept a perfect scheme like here or like here. Very nice, I think. I like Zwie Hacker. I mean, look how many, you know, un almost uncontrolled things are here. Why, what is going on here? Uh, you could say these are not, uh, these are a limit to explicitly decorative. It's true, but uh, uh, I still think it's an interesting experience to live in this building. I, I prefer this building to the school in Berlin because here he treated us, maybe he couldn't do it in Berlin, but here in Israel, they allowed him to, 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 to create something with the walls, not to have them just sleek and white and so on. It's an adventurous building. It's Piranesian in spirit. The Royal Dutch Military Police in Amsterdam. This is a project. He did all kinds of projects. In my opinion, it's okay, but uh, he didn't win. Uh, he didn't build it. These are later, uh, later works. The Poly Solidarity Center, another project, another work that was not built. This is his proposal for the, the addition to the great library by um, uh, Gunnar Asplund in, in Stockholm. I, I like more his earlier works. But he kept working and he probably works at this very moment being over 90. Uh, you see, I mentioned Piranesi. Uh, here he is, Piranesi with his great uh, serious carcery, the prisons. That's why it is important to, to know history, not in order to imitate it, but in order to confront yourself with the, with the great achievements of the past and find inspiration as well. Great art is not telling you, be like me. Great art is telling you, be yourself. So he did all kinds of works, Batumi, Batumi Aquarium uh, design also unbuilt. Uh, this we saw, uh, we saw this uh, housing co complex uh, and, uh, exhibition with his drawings. He had many exhibitions with his drawings and he drew well, as you can see, with temperament, with nerve, with verve.
just like Marcel Yanku, who also painted, but he kind of gave up on architecture later on. He also drew a lot. He didn't paint, but his paint, his drawings are, uh, you know, at the frontier between architecture and art. Um, one of the most remarkable city halls ever built and one of the most remarkable apartment buildings ever built. And a good museum, very good museum. And another interesting apartment building by Tzvi Hecker. And he, in fact, they are in close proximity, this one and this one. I like your smile, Mr. Hecker. The smile of a gentleman. You know, real art and real architecture cannot be totally legal. We agree. This was a, you know, a lecture uh, at the Cooper Union. We talked about Cooper Union uh, not too long ago. Uh, Tzvi Hacker, architecture. The, the architecture of Tzvi Hacker, the spiral apartment. We saw it. Sorry, this presentation is as it is, but uh, Sometimes you don't have to follow a linear order. Maybe, you know, uh, it's after all about hybridity. Architecture should not be afraid of impurity, of what is impure. Impurity is part of life. So with this, I ended. And I, I thank you for your uh, for your presence today.